So, I heard you missed last week's episode of Graveyard Cars. This is what you missed. Last time, Dave jumped from car to car, installing and assembling what he could, and Will struggled to keep focused on one project at a time. This time, Mark and the Ghoul set out to install the drivetrain for a 1970 Challenger RTSE. But their plans are short lived because of a truck delivery from professional wrestler and actor Bill Goldberg. They're coming to get you, Barbara. So this week we're working on a few different projects. Number one, the car that's been here way too long, our 1970 Coronet RT convertible. Now, if you recall back when we first got that car in, it belonged to Brett Torino. 426 Hemi, four speed, convertible, 70 Coronet RT. Total production of those cars were two. This is the only one left in existence. So it's a cubic dollar car. As a matter of fact, I had to take out a special insurance binder just on that car to have it here. I've had Alyssa out working with Will, and she's doing really well. She worked with him on learning how to do the seam sealer, did a spectacular job. Then Will came in and did all the pre-paint work. So now it's at the point where it's ready for its final paint. So one of the goals this week is to get that car painted. It's a gorgeous color too, wait till you see that. It's just absolutely stunning. Another car that's been here not nearly as long as, a, as Torino's car is a 1970 Dodge Challenger RTSE, one of 722 440 automatic air conditioning cars. So we've got to get the drivetrain in it. Right now it's sitting on the bin pack. It needs to get the drivetrain put into it, the whole bottom side buttoned up, because Dave literally has every part ready to go on that car, and he'll knock it out fast. That's gonna be our goal for the week. In the booth, we have Brett Torino's 1970 convertible Hemi Cornette, one of two. It's convertible, it's a Hemi, uh, it's an RT, so it's a pretty rare car, and we happen to have it here at the shop. The car's been here for a little while, I believe since 2013. Uh, owner's been patient, but it's time to get it done, and uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, so this, this color wasn't very popular, so when I tried to get the color, I called PPG. They didn't remake it because it wasn't a popular color. Um, so what I had to do is just find a color that was close, which I did, and they just tinted to match, and that's where we're at now. I gotta say, you know, every day is getting a little bit funner at Graveyard Cars as, as we evolve. So if you go back to the old days, like even just go back like 10 years ago, which I guess is the old days. So we can get along perfect. You and I always got along. We always get along. It's just, I tell, them, tell them right now, how many people do you know that actually? We would start working on an engine and a transmission after the body and paint work was done on one, right? And so you kind of had the pecking order. You got the car disassembled. You started doing the body and paint. Back then it was a one or two guy shop. Then if, after that got done, you'd jump onto the engine, the drivetrain, and the front suspension. So here's how that's changed. We now have drivetrains, like in the case of our 70 Challenger RTSE, where it's completely built out. Everything, drive shaft, rear axle, everything, every component, conceivable part, is on it on these custom stands that we built. And over my shoulder are about eight or so of those units that are built out that are just slowly waiting for the cars to come out of metal. So now when the car does come over from body, like the Challenger, it's just a matter of bolting it together. Now it's getting towards that assembly line thing. The other thing that's just a blast for me because I, I was doing this when there was nothing out there. When if you didn't have a valve cover, the correct 70 valve cover, you were out hunting for it. You were on the phone, you were on the internet, you were digging around for a good original used one. So now, with the advent of so many suppliers, Scott Smith at Harms, he's taking our carburetors, these 50 year old carburetors, and he's replating them, rebushing them, he's rebuilding them, he's making them exactly, maybe even a little better, than they were from the factory. I mean, in the old days, that was me out there doing it, and I never had the ability to plate them. So, in the case of this, uh, Doug helped me get the engine built out. We had it done for, uh, for a little bit before the car was actually ready to go. And it was a stock rebuild on it. So what we did was when we tore the engine apart originally, it was just a standard bore, had never been rebuilt. Because remember, this is a good, complete driving car. George! 
George. Where is George actually? Well, George. Need your help putting in a drivetrain 1970 Dodge Challenger RTS. You, you don't need my help. I'm oh. short on hands, I'm short on feet, I'm short on people. And you're just short all in general. Last night I took your picture out from my old dresser drawer. And I've been sitting alone digging up that's, bones. That's, it's Randy Travis. Well, that's weird. Well, I'm not singing it to you. Well, well, you're the one taking your clothes off after I sang the song. You now. asked me for help. Can you just give me a hand? That'd yes. be great. Here we go. Ah. Big D. What's up? Well, I heard this week Mark actually wants to get the suspension and drivetrain in a Lanceford 70 Challenger. So hopefully he gets me some help because I don't want to do it myself. Why am I? Why do I even? Why? Can you pay attention? No, I can't. Quit trying to play to the camera. I, there, I'm never needed out here. You know, uh, it's the same process we do on every car. It's a very simple process. As a matter of fact, I think Dave's done the past couple by himself. So, like the RTSE, right? Pretty rare car, huh? Very. Yeah. How many were in? In this color? No, just RTSE 444 uh, with automatic. 400. I don't. I don't have. Right around what would you guess? I would guess probably like 525. You're closer without going over. The price is right. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Winner. Just this isn't my department. You know, you don't see people out there coming out helping me. You don't see Mark saying, "Hey, Dave, let's get out here and let's help Will get these cars done." So I don't understand why I have to come do it, but I never get that return favor. Sorry to interrupt. Reliable just dropped off a pickup, and they need your signature. A truck? Yeah. A what kind of truck? Oh, it seems kind of weird, so I'm hoping it's something cool like an old power wagon or something like that. Yeah, what's what's up with the truck? I have no idea. I haven't got a clue. Oh, okay. uh, two weeks ago, I was bidding on a Little Red, or a, uh, a Warlock. Ooh, oh, that, that would cool. be badass. But I didn't get the bid. That's the only Dodge truck I've even talked about. Yeah, or a Midnight Express that I can would be think cool, of. too. Okay. I'm not expecting a car or a, actually, actually, I, I think I do know. Mother. Okay. Let's go look. We got a truck. Let's, Let's go check look it out. together. What do we got? What year? Let's talk about it. Flizzum flazum. A truck. Flizzu. That's oh. weird. We don't get trucks here too often. Coming up, Dave breaks down the history of the little red truck. Mark opens the Dave Weiss books to teach us about water pump housings. And later, Will tries to sneak away to get our rare and valuable 1970 Coronet painted. And Mark gets himself stuck between a bicep and a forearm. In 1977, Dodge launched a pickup with fat tires, bucket seats, and wood trim. Originally going to be called the Red Warlock, the name changed to what is known today as the Little Red Truck. Built on a D150 chassis and weighing a whopping 6,000 pounds, the real incentive was the 360 V8 and four barrel carburetor without the burden of any pollution control equipment. And this truck was hard to come by. At least in 1977, the brochure noted that it wasn't available in California, Florida, Maryland, Oregon, or Washington, and might not meet local noise standards elsewhere. The truck was also pricey. The package was an additional $1,100 on top of the $5,100 base price of the D150, and it took on numerous other options. For example, automatic transmission, the Adventurer trim package, FM stereo, a convenience package, oil pressure gauge, and quad rectangular headlights. With those minimum options considered, the price exceeded $7,400. And that didn't include the $200 bucket seats or the $624 air conditioning add-on. Only 2,100 units were made in 1978, with a slight increase to 5,100 units in 1979. But when the gas crisis hit, most trucks sat on the dealer's lots, and in 1980, the production was canceled. Doug comes to tell me that there's a truck here, that, that Reliable just dropped off a truck. I'm hoping it's something cool like an old power wagon or something like that. I am excited to hear there's a truck here. We haven't done a truck here at the shop yet. Well, we step outside and I see a truck, but I kind of keep looking for the truck that we're supposed to be getting delivered. Little come to find out that it's Goldberg's newer truck. It's all completely rhino lined. It's jacked way to the sky. It's got these big old massive tires on it. The only reason it surprised me is it wasn't supposed to be here for six months to a year. That was what I told him. This is Goldberg's rig. Goldberg's sending up that rolled over, kicked in crap box Dodge truck that needs an engine in it, which I agreed to do all those things, but I didn't agree to do it right now. 
you know, Goldberg's become a friend over the years and he's a huge, huge Mopar guy. Now he's a car guy by, by nature, but he has a, a, a soft spot for the Mopar. So he has a few. We did our uh, 68 GTX 444 speaker, a beautiful car. Remember that was blue with the white stripes? Gorgeous machine. After we did that, he was so thrilled with it um, that he called up and he said he had another car that wasn't restored. It was a nice car, but it needed to be restored. And that was a 1970 Cuda, 446 barrel four-speed shaker hood car. Uh, black, no vinyl top, black interior. So I think, they, see, 902 of those cars were built. Now that, 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 that statistic only breaks down the 440, the six barrel, and the four speed. It doesn't go into the fact that it's black or that it's a track pack car or if it has an AM8 track. Goldberg called me a couple weeks ago and he was saying that he blew up the engine or was ready to blow up in his Dodge truck. And I said, sure, be happy to help you out. He's a good guy, he'll do anything for anybody. I don't mind helping. But I told him also, there's no way I'm gonna get to it anytime soon, so don't even bother sending it up. And I just showed up. Looking at the truck, you can actually see Bill Goldberg in this truck. This would be a truck for him, because it's high, it's mean looking, it's big. We're gonna put an engine in it, that's all we're doing to it. That's what he asked, he said, please, please, please do me a favor, and so. It'll be interesting to do, uh, we, you know, whether it just plugs right in, how it goes, uh, do we need to tear the whole front end off? So it'll be a learning curve, but apparently he wants it done, and he wants it done now. I don't know, it's, it sounds easy, but I know it's not gonna be easy. My only concern about doing it is I know it's the same block, it'll bolt up, but they come with that controller, which makes life great. So you put it in a Superbird, that's the best thing since sliced bread, right? Yeah. Because we'd have no way to make the engine run. But that's already got a computer in it that runs an engine. So will it run the 392 or do you have to change things out? And those yeah. are things I just gotta call Ed back at Mopar and find out. What I'd like to know is I, who, Rhino coasts an entire truck. Yeah, the entire truck is completely Rhino lined. And I mean, it does hold up, you know, you get trucks that are all beat up and scratched and rusty and a lot of these guys just cut the rust out of them, fiberglass them and undercoat the body and forget about it. So it's, uh, it's nothing new to me to see the undercoating. I mean, the truck's all right, but it would have been nicer if it was painted and not all the crazy bumpers or... Tires and wheels are nice. If you wanted to text your paint, you could have had you do it. <laughs> you know? While Mark and Dave admire the truck, um, I'm gonna use this opportunity to kind of sneak out and get back to painting our 70 Cornet. <laughs> hey Willie, what's the paint coat on this one? I know you can match the texture of the color. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey! <laughs> Where the hell, where did he go? He disappears, he just drifts off. I'm stuck out here looking at this crap box, rolled over, kicked in, pile of monkey dung. Don't tell Bill, you cut that out. I don't need my ass well, kicked. Okay. At least this one runs and drives. Yeah, that's the good news. Grab the stringo and put it out in rat row. We'll get to it when we get to it. Sounds good. One thing I am very curious about, and, th and this is true, if we're gonna be able to use the original computer to run that 392, or if we're gonna have to put in their plug and play kit, or if it's a hybrid of the two. So it'll be interesting. I'll be learning with you people exactly what it takes to make that happen. So if, I, if and when I get to it, Mark Warman. I don't need a belt around my waist to tell me how awesome I am. I mean, I need one to hold my pants up, obviously. I've lost a lot of weight and I've not been sick or anything. So don't. 1969 Charger Daytona. Who could mistake the rear spoiler on that car? Stood 80 feet in the air, whatever it was. 1970, Chrysler got a lot more conservative. They came out with another wing style spoiler it was option code J81. Now, the question is, what was the name of that spoiler in 1970, the J81 option? Was it the duck tail, the goal wing, the go wing? A little bit tricky. Think you know the answer? Stay tuned after the break. All right, gang, how'd you do? It's a tricky one, right? It's 1970, you got your CUDA, you got a J81 option. One of the dudes up at the gut says, hey man, what kind of spoiler is that? What do they call that thing? What was your answer gonna be? Well, if it was on a 70 CUDA, it was a go wing. G-O dash wing. If you had a 71 CUDA, if you were that cool, and you had a factory J81 rear spoiler, it was called a goal wing. Main difference between those two is a goal wing is flat all the way across and turns back. Kind of like, a, almost like a boomerang shape on the ends. Where the go wing, is flat across and turns down on the ends. 
Now the other thing I mentioned was a ducktail. That was your rear spoiler you would have got on an AAR or a TA Challenger. That was code J82. But never was it available on anything but an AAR and a TA Challenger. The only thing is, and I wouldn't tell Bill because he'd knock a lung loose. What's with the rhino coat? The yeah. entire truck is rhino coated. Nobody does that. That's a new thing. I'm now. from Springfield, Oregon, and nobody does that. Yeah. So, is, is Will going to help me uh, finish the rear end up anyway? Yeah, let me get him. Hang on. I'll get stuff ready here. Okay. Willy Wonka! <laughs> Dude, serious. Why? Why? Dude, I, I just, I just need your car. help. You're like you're running around no. trying to sneak out. I need to put the drive in so it, Dave you, can work it's on. It's four it. bolts. Dude, it's. You want us to redo your paint work? You have a hard enough time doing it the first time right anyway. I'm just kidding. He does a great job. Mark. Just having a little fun with you. No, this. You've been getting me just all having day. a little fun. Can you just help me? It's a 15 minute. If it's that easy, just come do it and quit about it. Uh, so here we go again, I'm getting pulled off. That means I'm having to get back out of my paint suit again, get the respirator back off again, and I'm having to come over here when it's a job that Dave can do by himself. I have a car in the booth right now. Gotta get a decor, Roy. Just listen to me. I'm writing some of my own music and I'm stealing original uh, songs. It depends how much he talks. Uh, help me push this out. Okay. Yeah, i talk about it here real quick. All right, yeah. Oh, he's okay. Go ahead and start putting the rear end together. Get her installed while you're doing that. I'm gonna give a little 1970 cameras on me tutorial about the Dodge Challenger U code, 375 horsepower, 440 Magnum with H51 air conditioning. So on our 1970 Challenger, I just wanna show you some of the things that are a little bit different because it's an air conditioning car versus so many of them that we do that aren't air conditioning. Uh, you start with the fan. It's the same fan blade that we put on most of our cars. It ends in 216, that's the part number. What's unique is, Tony's parts just started reproducing this. This is the correct, original, with the part number and date code, clutch fan that uses the thermal spring in it, bimetallic thermal spring. So this is what makes it a... Hey, Mark. This is what makes it an air conditioning. Why? What? <laughs> this thing says filming, what is that? An engine. They just dropped but it off. But when you see the little light on that says filming, What's up with this, Doug? It's an engine. Somebody, they just dropped it off. Just come in? I yeah. know it's an engine. I can see it's an engine. Cousin Dougie comes in and says he's got an engine. Got a, got a crate engine for me. Another interruption. Right when we get down to business, here he comes through the door with a forklift and a crate engine. So lo and behold, John Buck's uh, Hellcat probably showed up for his Challenger. So then we got to stop what we're doing and dig into that and see what's going on with that. I got three engines coming, and we got the Hellcat for bucks, and then we got a 354 coming, and then... That still slows down process and keeps me from painting that cornet. Trying to film, trying to do something, right? Just doing my job. See, Dougie doesn't get that. That's what I'm talking about. Something's wrong in his head. There's a light on the Ooh, other side of the wall that, that says, don't enter, this means you, Doug. So there it goes. Let's go back. <laughs> I didn't order this engine. Stay tuned. Mark opens the Dave Weiss books to teach us about water pump housings. Will continues to try to get the 1970 Coronet painted. And the ghouls are in for the biggest surprise yet. That's the 392. Yeah, that's the 392. Go ahead and undo it. Could probably just slid it down. You know what's funny about that? Huh. I didn't order this engine. You did? Just read it. Is it a 6.4? Six, six six four, four, right. four yeah, 6.4. Six, four. I didn't order it. I'll tell you who did order it. Bill the Bully Goldberg. The truck shows up, the crate engine shows up, and then Mark says, you know, is, is Bill Goldberg trying to bully us? He definitely is. I mean, if he's not intimidating enough, here he is sending his truck, sending his engine, I mean, back to back like that. So apparently he's wanting something done. Uh, Goldberg's a patient man, and he was more than patient with us on the other uh, jobs that we've done for him. So I'm thinking if he just comes in here now, pushes a little, it'll probably influence Mark just to get, you know, next time there's an opening, maybe we just kind of sneak it in real quick. See, he called me a week ago and goes, when my truck gets here, when do you think we can get working on it? Well, we got a lot of cars ahead of him, right? Oh, yeah. So he 
told him right away, right? Well, I told him I can't get on this thing for quite a while. It doesn't. It's fine. It can be here. We'll put it upstairs in a stock. But huh. I'm not gonna let him pull it. He he was that schoolyard. You know the schoolyard bully, right? Yep. I know what he's doing. This is this is classic now. This is classic. This is schoolyard bully stuff, right? Just kind of bullying you around. Cut a deal on the phone, right? Hey, will you be willing to put it in? You know, I don't have anybody down here. I trust to put the engine in. Like, yeah, Bill, God, yeah, send it up, buddy. Get out of here, you nutter, right? Of course I'll do that for you. No hurry, right? No, oh, of course, no hurry. I'm Bill over. I'm not hurry. Okay. Well, now we got the truck. We got a crate engine, right? What do I have to wake up to tomorrow? That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Now, I love the guy, right? I love him, but he's big, so he is big. everybody's going to cower down to me because I'm bald and big. Well, whatever, just clean. <laughs> 1976, right, junior high school, I stood up to the bully. Check this out. So this guy's name is Rick Brown. He's 19 feet tall, right? Great big, like Goldberg, right? He's got a problem. So it turns out this is the motor for Goldberg's truck. So while Mark and Dave are looking at it, drooling over it, doing all that weird stuff over it, I'm gonna just kind of sneak out and then head out to uh, get the cornet painted. Yeah. So I go up to him and I say, what you gonna do? And he looks down at me and I walk up to him, I walk up to him and, and, and he looks down at me and he says, bust you up, mm -hmm. right? You know what I say? Huh. Everybody else would have ran. Yeah. I said, go for it. Hey, uh, so, yeah, wasn't that from Rocky Three? Mr. T. Oh, the. No. I see what you're. What does it matter That's who did one. it first? Yeah, as long as you told him. Yeah, yeah, you shied him off. So far, the ghoul set out to get the drivetrain installed in our 1970 Challenger RTSE, but have been bombarded with interruption after interruption, which consequently has prevented Will from also getting the super rare and valuable 1970 Coronet its final coat of paint. Now, there's only one goal ahead of them, to get the drivetrain of the Challenger RTSE installed. Unless professional rustler and actor Bill Goldberg throws any more surprises their way. Okay, round two. I'm gonna try to at least get this car painted before they notice that I'm actually gone. Bill! <laughs> So here I am in the booth, I got the paint suit on, and yet again, here comes Mark, and I can't emphasize enough how frustrating it is. Why won't you just, you just come me help me put the thing together? I what is with the zoot suit and the funny helmet? What are you mm. doing? What? Being safe. Can you please just take your funny suit off, take your funny helmet off, and come out here and help me? Now, this is it. If you disappear again, you're gonna literally disappear. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 You never yeah. saw The Sopranos? <sighs> Having to put the suit on, put the mask on, take it off. I've done that literally the whole day. I'm over it. I literally just want to get in the booth and get the car painted. Yeah. You want to help him put that back on? You, you got that box okay, Mayor? No, I don't. Did you see him no. earlier trying to lift his side up? One arm got all oh, weak he, on him. Things are friggin' heavy. That's some, some lumber in there. You ready, boss? Hang on, I got it. Hey, how about screw you, you freak? I'm cleaning and jerking here. Oh, you about didn't get it on that first try. He lifted too fast, you idiot. I was get, I was gonna do a power clean and jerk. Right. <gasps> yep, that's what you did. You went to lift and you realized it was heavy. Woo! Doug put the duct tape on. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> He's an odd one. Uh, Doug's awesome. Yeah, so many of the cars that we're doing right now, especially to get into the Kudas and the Challengers and the 70 on up, you're, you're seeing that 446 packs, 426 I mean, we've kind of come to the table, so our shop's filled with those. But this is a nice little original U-Code 375 horse 440 Magnum with a four barrel on it. So I'm just gonna take a couple of minutes. I wanna show you some things that make the four barrel unique. Just kinda of acclimate you with a few little things that maybe we don't get to cover all that much on a normal engine. Okay, so the first thing you see is this uses a 215 fan. So it's the same fan blade most of our cars that we work on here have. 
Most of the cars with the max cooling have a clutch fan too, but it's different than this one. So Tony's Parts is now making the AC version. That's what you see here. So you got your nickel cadmium finish on it. You have your correct part number. You have your correct date code down here. This little spring is what identifies that as being for an air conditioning car. All right. Okay. What do you think? Well, well we're down? Yeah, we're there, aren't we? Almost said the S word, but I stopped. No bad words out of me. Keep going. Uh, hold it. Go up. Eh, that should work. The fan blade itself is the same fan blade. The part number ends in 216. 215 is the same blade, too. The fan clutch itself is a little different. You'll notice if you go look at our other engines up there that have a fan clutch on them for the max cooling, they don't have this bimetallic coil spring in them. This is designed originally for the air conditioning car, so it was a bit temperature sensitive. That is the difference between the AC and the non-AC max cooling. What has happened? Sweet, sweet. Did they all fall, fall apart? The top one was money. The, yeah. or the bottom one went right in, but. Yeah, that's why I had a problem with the, with the top one. You gotta kind of hold it up against that frame rail. The unit you see here, this bracket and this idler pulley, you'll never see those on a non-air conditioning because a non-air conditioning car only uses one or two groove pulleys down on the crankshaft. A one groove pulley down on the crankshaft would be it was a manual steering car. A two groove would be it's a power steering car. The alternator belt on those, if you look at the other ones, wrap around the crankshaft, the water pump, and the alternator. In this case, there's a lot more going on. You'll notice we don't have the AC compressor on there yet. That's back getting built by Classic Air. When it comes back, it'll have two pulleys on it that'll line up with the two pulley alternator and go around the two pulley crankshaft. Those are the items that are gonna make it function like it's supposed to, to spin like it's supposed to at the right RPM. The idler pulley is just a unit that wasn't needed on a non-air conditioning car, but because those other two belts are being used for the AC compressor and the alternator, we had to come up with one to run the water pump. So this one, this idler pulley, is just a free spinning pulley. All it does is it takes up the gap and gives this belt that runs the water pump something to ride on. A non-air conditioning car doesn't use that. It just uses the same belt to run the water pump, the alternator, and the crankshaft. Let's see. I feel like I shouldn't even be over here. I should be painting. I know, I hear you. I appreciate you being over here, though. Well, I'll do it for this, you, Dave. Then I can get this done. Is it going? Yep. No, I don't mind. I know I'm there's a, a rag player. there, too, if you need to wipe your hands off. And so a couple other things just real quick here, because a lot of this is the same as be a non-air conditioning car. This is a 444 barrel car. One of the things you see is this stove. This heat riser stove, Tony makes this too, by the way, but these are usually missing because either people put headers on their cars or they took the manifold off to replace the gasket and didn't see the need for this to go back on. But that's what it's supposed to look like. What it does, it takes the warm air off the manifold, it goes through a coil-shaped tube and into this port right here. That gives it warm air inside the air cleaner. All right. We're good. Nice. That shit went pretty smooth. I can't wait to get that cornet in here. I know. Hey, think you'd have it a day earlier if I could have painted it. Yeah, I know. Uh, you'll get her done. I know. Other things that aren't really unique to an air conditioning car, but are kind of interesting when you look at the correctness of it. In 1970, the kickdown linkage was actually three pieces versus in 71 on up, it went to a one piece. So let me show you that. This rod, this bell crank, and this rod. The upper two, this bell crank up here, that's painted engine color and is painted on the engine when it gets painted, holds the actual adjustable rod itself. So with these bell cranks in place, all they're doing is collectively they're coming down here and they're intersecting and controlling the throttle pressure. The throttle pressure on the valve body inside the transmission, if you are going down the road at 35 miles an hour in your 70 Challenger 440 and you stomp the gas to the floor, this is kind of what it does right here. I'll pull on the throttle cable and give you the example. When that moves, that throttle, now right now it's not adjusted right, it's adjusted all the way back. Foot goes to the floor, you see this rod go back? If all of the adjustments were set right when I pulled that throttle right now, it would go like that. When that lever goes back, it increases the valve body pressure, which controls your shift points and the strength of your shift. So that's a three-piece. 
71 on up, they went to a one piece. So basically it's one big rod that goes all the way from the carburetor straight down, follow, basically it sort of follows all these things, but it's just one rod. They figured out, hey, we could do the same thing with just one rod coming down. But if you're doing a 70, there's other th kick down linkages you could use, but if you want it to be right, you're gonna wanna look for the three piece. So <clears throat> in a nutshell, those are some of the unique things on the 70. I'm gonna check back in with the guys uh, on the rear end, see how they're doing. And if that's done, we can go ahead and start moving forward with the engine install. We're a lot more efficient. How are we doing? We got her. Good? Yeah. I love it. You want me to go up, Dave? Yeah, we're ready, buddy. We got wheels on and everything. That's nice. We don't have to even mess with the wheel. If you had a 1970 Dodge Challenger, you had the original fender tag, and there was a Victor 1 X-Ray, V1X, it would mean that your car left the factory with a full vinyl top in black and color, as a matter of fact. True or false, you could have actually ordered a simulated crocodile pattern on that same 1970 Challenger. Think you know the answer? You stay tuned after the break, I'll let you know. So how'd you do, true or false? Could you have gotten a simulated crocodile pattern vinyl roof in 1970? If you said false, you are correct. Now let me explain before you throw anything at TV. V1X definitely meant that you had a black full vinyl roof. V1W would have been a white full vinyl roof. If you had a V1G, a Victor One Golf, that would have been a simulated gator grain. Not a crocodile, they're different species. Gator grain was available in 1970 on a Dodge Challenger. So if you said false, you're right. Let's have another chapter of getting wise. So now we're gonna go into the water nipple section. Now this is the part where the heater hoses go onto the engine. How do we know it's the right nipple? How do you know it's the right water pump housing? Because there are two water pump housings that have the same casting numbers, but one of them is the correct one for the 70 on up, half inch and five eighths, where the other one is for the double five eighths back. So we're gonna learn that right now. So we have A, B, and C. These are the three options for a big block. This is our, uh, 383, 440, 446 barrel, 426 Hemi. This is on a 70, let's just say a 70 Cuda is what we're working on. We have the three options here. We also have the breakdown in the chart to tell you exactly what they're supposed to be. So from 1968 to 1970, I'm working on a 70, the one they're calling out for here it has the A next to it. It's a 3 8 pipe thread. That's this one right here. So here you can see that this is a 3 8 diameter pipe thread, which is much bigger than a regular thread. The other end of it is a 5 8 heater hose. This is going to go into the water pump housing. It's gonna thread in very nicely. It's going to take, in 70, a 5 8 hose onto it. However, in 70 also, they go to a half inch heater hose on the other side. So if you look here at C, you're going to go down and see 1970, it has a quarter inch national pipe thread. This on the other end will accept the half inch heater hose. So now we know one quantity of the 5 8 style, one quantity of the half inch style. These two go into the water pump housing after the engine has been painted. In 1968, 1969, and previous to that in some cases, they used two different heater hose fittings in height, but not necessarily in diameter. You see both of these use the same 3 8 national pipe thread. When I flip it over, you see that they're the exact same size diameter, just different heights. That's because when you go out and you look at one of our engines, you look at a 69, it comes out higher on one of them than the other one, but you'll notice that they're both the same. Tricky part is if you look at the water pump housings, the part number, the casting numbers are the same on them. You actually have to turn them up and look at those diameter openings to make sure you have the right water pump for your 70 model or your 69 on back. Cousin Dougie comes in and says he's got an engine, got a, got a crate engine for me. It's Goldberg. I know what he's doing. This is, this is classic now, this is classic. This is schoolyard bully stuff. It gets done when it gets done. Okay, 
So, Dave, you want to raise the car up. We'll roll this back. Yep. Uh, the front suspension is pretty straightforward. It's, it's a good thing we're not dealing with a big 426 Emmy. So the 440 Magnum should go right in there. So I don't anticipate any problems. Okay, let's go back. Okay. Yeah, let me, let me help. <laughs> it's an automatic, so it'd be automatic. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Pretty, right. well, maybe a hair more hair, but yeah, I like oh, it. No, Somewhere in that range. He's got the eye. He does. I do. I do. I got the eye. I can, I can do a plumb bob. You ever do nope. a plumb bob? Ho, oh, oh, ho, who's next? Uh oh What's up, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> There's the man. I love it. Goldberg sticks his head in, screams his tagline, who's next? Which is actually something I used to use on the playground when I was getting ready to whoop a kid's ass. You know, I used to go, who's next, right? And anyway, he probably saw some old clips from me in 8 millimeter. It doesn't matter where it came from, okay? It's his, you can use it. Uh, you know, it was a great surprise having Bill show up. You know, he always makes a grand entrance. But then we're looking back, you know, the truck shows up, the motor shows up. So what, what else is gonna happen other than Bill show up? But it's always great to see him. What are you doing out here? You and I got some things to talk about. And grabs a hold of Mark, not in a headlock, close, but not a complete headlock. I thought he was gonna spear him for a minute there, but uh, he led him into his office, so I don't know. Uh, we'll see how that bullying thing is uh, gonna work out for Mark. All right, we gotta talk a little business, probably movie stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Movie stuff, he'll be his stunt double. Yeah. Danny DeVito's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> You, you know, I hate getting distracted and having to go over there and help Mark and do those drivetrains, but it actually kind of worked out good because Goldberg showed up. I saw them heading into the office and it looked like he had a pretty good grip on Mark. But the good thing about that is why they're in there t uh, hashing out what's gonna happen, I can head out there and paint that car. So the uh, the movie role that you got for me, right? It's coming, it's coming. <laughs> things, yeah. things were kind of on the back burner. You know, here, have a seat real quick. But, uh, you do the best work in the world. No question. So for him to say that he looks to me as, as the best in, that, in, in the Mopar world of working on these cars, I mean, that's just a huge compliment. And I won't even play it off like I'm all that because I'm not all that and uh, it's humbling. But man, two and a half years, I can't wait two and a half years for that truck. I can't, I gotta use that damn thing. I have a parking lot full of cars that belong to people who are willing to wait if you got all these hundred people waiting and stuff, get one done and push my truck in. And while Mark's in the office probably getting speared right now, I'm gonna go ahead and head in there and get that 1970 Coronet all painted. <laughs> what you don't understand yeah, is that now is the wrestler you're dealing with. Point obviously being, I think I'll be able to get to your car, the truck, quicker than I was originally talking about. Every time we get one of these cars done, you know, it's a great feeling. They're rare cars, they're high dollar cars, and uh, it's very rewarding when these cars are out there and people say, hey, Will Scott from Graveyard Cars did this car and they look amazing. So what is it gonna take? Do I have to get my hands dirty? We gotta put an engine in the RTSC. You can help us do that. Why are we talking? Let's go. A big bug-eyed thing. Half of the stuff with Mark is levity. Half of the stuff with Mark is, you know, we just kind of push the envelope. I just like playing around with the guy. He knows I love him to death. I understand his plight. I understand his situation. But uh, but we've got a we've got a pretty cool relationship. It's a lot of fun. Billy G is going to help us put that drivetrain in. He volunteered. You heard him. Yeah, that's awesome. Goldberg apparently is going to help install this. And I tell you what, I couldn't be more happy to be on board with it. Uh, I'm a team player. You know, if Mark says, "Hey, Will, we need need you over here." You know, I'm gonna drop what I'm doing to get over here, and that's and that's where we're at right now. I've been bugging Will all day. He's been running. I chased him from one room to the other. He's hiding. He didn't want to help. Now, the minute Goldberg shows up, who's next, Mr. Bill Goldberg? He's more than he's volunteering his time. Okay, I know that you're not really a hands-on kind of mechanic. Well, I, guy, what? Yes. No, I'm you're saying kidding, right? I am kidding. I just pulled the motor of my 429, my uh, the lawman yesterday. Yeah. You did? Well, I helped. Yes. <laughs> okay, now we're getting somewhere. I didn't do it by myself. Well, you're Bill Goldberg. You shouldn't have to, for God's sake. Well, am I going to pick it up and put it on my shoulder? You see the Pope baptizing people? No. Well, you're, you're a businessman. Yeah. Goldberg's going to actually help us install the engine suspension. What more can he ask for? The front bolt. Uh, K member yes, bolts sir. are right there. We're gonna wanna line up that hole with it. Yes, sir. At the back, you're gonna wanna keep an eye on your transmission cross member to make sure that it slides into the torsion bar cross member right here. So, 
where green light go, well, big bill. Wonder, no, 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 hold on, hold on before the green light go. Um, I came to you guys because Goldberg. you know everything, right? And then Bill gets a fast one on Mark, says, hey, what's up with that rear cross member on the transmission? If you knew everything, you'd know that this is a B-body cross member going in an E-body car. I mean, it's an easy mistake to make. They got all the cross members hanging on the wall. Doug's new, he just started doing these. <laughs> and uh, easy mistake to make. Now we're gonna change out the transmission cross member. Bill is right. Now, uh, this is interesting, right? You taught me well. I put it on there to see if you pay attention. All right, it was a test to see if he was watching. And you know, kudos to him. Um, he, uh, he's, he picked it right up, you know? All right, guys, got the right cross member. <laughs> right here, <laughs> go for it. Something like that. Keep me on my toes, are you guys? <laughs> Oh, a little bit loose, we'll move around. Head on down, Willie. Yeah, yeah, that looking good. Looking good? Oh, looking yeah. good, Willie. Good over here. Yep, perfectly good. So okay, far, so good. I gotta actually physically work with Goldberg on a car, which we haven't done that. We've goofed around a lot, and he says it, but he actually got in there and gave us a hand. Helping install that engine was very rewarding. I very much like the individuality that Mopar collectors, owners bring to the table. It's something different. Uh, the engine install went fantastic. Car dropped right down where it's supposed to. Everything lined up. Bill got down there, he's getting dirty, laying in the, on the ground there, tightening up the K-member bolts. And I love having Goldberg out. Yeah, he's a great guy, he's got a great sense of humor. He's very much like myself. We seem to have certain areas that we are, like we're always showboating or whatever, yeah. Will, you wanna grab some grub before we head out? Let's do it. Gonna grab some grub and go have a little lunch. Having him up here is more like having a friend or a brother out here from somewhere, you know? His help on the car, we could have done without, but I will say the fact that he was there to help shows that he's a team player. Yeah, so now you know what he's doing now, right? He's trying, he, he's being me, right? I invented it, I invented the move, now he's stealing it, right? So that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine. Now the engine and drivetrain, suspension, and tires and wheels are finally on Lance Rick's car. I can get it on the ground, roll it out, and start knocking out this interior. Car's really close, so I just want to get banging away on it. Yeah, what a crazy day. I mean, it started out with, you know, trying to get a task and then all these distractions and everything else, and then lo and behold, here comes big Bill Goldberg, uh, lighting up the mood, lighting up the party, and helped us out, and just fun to hang out with him, so uh, it just turned into a fantastic day. And to top all things off, Will actually got the Cornette painted. Turned out beautiful, and I can't wait to get that in the assembly room. Had a great day here at Graveyard Cars. A great week, as a matter of fact. Billy G came out to chill out for a little bit. Tried put me to, to work. I did put him to work. He actually got his hands dirty for the first time in 25, 30 years working on a car. Minutes, 25, 30 minutes. We got our engine and transmission installed in the 1970 Challenger RTSE 440 automatic. How many of those were built, Billy? Hell, I don't know. Yeah, 733. I don't care about automatics, I only have four speeds. His 1970 Cuda that is here to be restored that we have yet to unveil. <laughs> four, 446 barrel, four speed, track pack, triple black, bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? Shaker hood, that's a rap song. Been working on a remix of it. Anyway, uh, Will, did you see the beautiful 1970 Coronet RT, 426 semi four speed that Will painted? Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous, stunning. Billy, thank you for coming out and Hanging out with us, hey, we love you, ma'am. As always, it's, it's an honor and a privilege. Everybody you got working in the shop's great, and uh, there's no question that you do good work, or I wouldn't be here. And you wanna bring that poop box truck back when uh, we get it all done and run it against my 1976 Dodge Power Wagon with a 440 Magnum? If you got anything that'll race the lawman or the demon, then yes. <laughs>